Hello everyone, it's Polar's Lights and Signals. Today I want to go over a streetlight that I've had in my collection for quite a while now. Um, this streetlight is really, really special. Um, this streetlight uh, came from Philadelphia. Um, recently, uh, Philadelphia has been doing a lot of LED conversions, and unfortunately I'd say probably 90% of the Philadelphia area is LED now. And uh, over the course of time, I've come to learn that uh, when it comes to PEMCO fixtures, that PEMCO is kind of a, a fixture that you really will only ever find in Philadelphia. However, there are some examples of PEMCO fixtures elsewhere, um, but it's very, uh, PEMCO is one of those uh, products that are extremely, 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 extremely hard to come by. They're super, super rare, and it just, it seems like you really can't find any of them um, any elsewhere other than the Philadelphia area. But a while ago, I decided to go back again. Um, after that really nice guy on LG uh, sent me a location of a municipal who does contract uh, for uh, the electrical utility there, um, I've been keeping in contact with them and have been getting, uh, have been going back every once in a while to grab streetlights as they are very kind and uh, very nice in letting me uh, grab stuff and I really thank those people. Um, I won't mention who they are as they are a private contractor and they don't need to be getting a bunch of phone calls. but. Um, Luckily, uh, they've been doing a lot of work for Philadelphia, and I've managed to get some really, really important fixtures saved. And I hate to say this, but there's a lot of people that do live in Philadelphia, and I'm kind of ashamed of them because the people uh, have taken really good pictures of fixtures there, and they've not taken the time at all to uh, contact the utility there to acquire and uh, save and preserve some of these fixtures. And... Again, people, I really encourage you to do everything you can, you know, call your util local utilities, ask if you can um, somehow acquire the streetlights, um, you know, leave notes on poles, on streetlights that are about to be replaced, just, you know, getting to know people too can really, really help you in uh, saving this stuff, and a lot of people just aren't as serious, and I, I'm telling you people, and, you know, I'm going to kick you in the butt with this, get off your butts, and go save some of these streetlights because there's a lot of these Pemco streetlights and this is an example of one there's a lot of these types of streetlights that are just are they need to be preserved so I really want to uh, I'm hopeful I really would like to see more people uh, get involved in getting fixtures saved but I digress um this fixture right here is a fixture from Philadelphia this is a very um, very rare fixture and I definitely want to go over it uh, right now with you guys so let me go ahead and lay it on the floor right here for you guys and we can get started. Alright so this folks is my late 1950s Pemco Style 69. Now the name style is actually a, is a term that Pemco uses to identify um, their types of street lights. So basically um, this fixture is extremely similar to the GE Form 400 uh, power pack. And I do have one in my collection but it's currently in storage and I don't have it here to do a comparison unfortunately today. But if, ever, if anyone uh, doesn't know what the Form uh, 400 power pack is, basically it's a uh, it, they take the they have taken the remote ballasted uh, form 400 head and they've uh, built a special um, back section to house um, internal components such as a ballast and a capacitor and other uh, little various things you know to help wire it up. And at the time, um, GE did that because they were trying to come up with a Cobra head fixture. So basically, uh, they kind of uh, put one together, and that was their first Cobra head uh, 400 watt mercury fixture. Pemco decided to do the same exact thing. So basically, um, and I don't have one, but I can pull a picture up for you guys. There's a fixture called the Pemco Style 68. And basically that utilizes just the front shell and refractor. And then that just mounts um, directly to the actual uh, arm or you know mounting device that the head's being mounted to. But then the Style 69 here, um, like uh, GE, Pemco wanted to make a Cobra head um, fixture with uh, internal components up in the air with the uh, light. So what they did was they put together uh, this Pemco Style 69 by using the, uh, the standard uh, remote ballasted head and they built 
and created this um, back section with a slip fitter um, and an, an inside for internal components and a photo cell so that it could be like a cobra head fixture. And um, after uh, this fixture uh, was uh, released on um, the Model 70, which I did a video on, please go check out that video. Um, it's a two-parter video I did a, uh, a while back um, on, on this channel. Um, that's a really cool video, so if you guys haven't seen that, please go check that one out as well. Um, but the Model 70 basically uh, came out after uh, this fixture, kind of like how the M400 came out after the Form 400 Power Pack. Now the the Form 400 Power Pack was apparently only out for about a year, so I'm, I'm guessing that this uh, Pemco Style 69 was possibly around um, for a year or two as well. Um, this fixture is extremely, extremely rare. Um, the Form 400 is pretty rare too, but this Pemco version, since Pemco is a pretty obscure company, um, this fixture, um, I really don't know where any of these uh, other ones are. When I went to go get this fixture, I had actually gotten a couple of them. And a good buddy of mine who was on YouTube here uh, just did a video on it. But um, I kept this one in my collection because this one has some other things, that um, minor things that needed some repairs on. But I've already done now and it's uh, ready, of course, for this video. But yeah, there was a couple of them. And, and, I've done some research on these things, and it's just, these things don't seem like they exist anywhere else. One thing I'll mention real quick, too, is, again, you know, if anyone knows actually right away where any of these uh, Pemco Style 69s are, please let me know. Um, I know uh, when I saw some pictures of these on Facebook um, from some people who live in Philadelphia, they were calling this the Forum 400, but um, don't be fooled. Uh, the Forum 400 and the Pemco Style 69 both actually have a very distinct uh, difference on it. And that actually brings me uh, perfectly into uh, the next part of this video. So let me go ahead and uh, bring the camera up here and we can uh, go ahead and just kind of get a closer look at just the outside in general. Let's just start here. Um, one thing to note is with the Pemco Style 69, its integral ballast section is very, very, very long, um, and it's pretty much square. Uh, the Form 400 has a very uh, curved, pointy back, but this one is just pretty boxy. And if we uh, go up here, as boxy as it looks too, it's actually really skinny, as you can see. And yeah, actually, you can kind of get an idea as to how long this is. Here's my foot right here. And you can just see this fixture, uh, the back end of this fixture is extremely long. So um, that's one thing to note. So yeah, if anyone knows where uh, any more of these are, um, no, uh, can tell what, uh, what the difference between uh, the Form 400 and this, uh, please, please feel free to tell me down in the comments, you know, sharing information on these street lights is good because people can take more photos of them and uh, hopefully uh, go out and actually preserve these things. But yeah, so that's pretty much the uh, one big difference. Um, the front section is very similar um, to the uh, Form 400 Power Pack. Um, it's just a pressed aluminum front with a refract or refractor mounted to and that's really it. Um, it does look very similar but they are different completely. So yeah, but talking about this, um, this back section here is all cast aluminum. Um, it's very thick and it's definitely a very, very durable. So it's really high quality. Um, I really love it. And one thing you'll see too is some Pemco logoing. So you can see it says Pemco. Um, I think this might be some kind of model name, but I'm not entirely sure. But it does say in the uh, catalog advertisements that it is a 69. So yeah. And you can see just yeah how long it is, and you can see it's really nice and smooth. And actually, for uh, being in the on the East Coast, uh, this fixture is pretty clean. But uh, most of these types of fixtures are. So yeah, and here is the slip fitter on the back here. Um, you got a couple bolts. There's one up here for uh, pivoting up and down, and then there's actually another one hiding under it. But to clip it down to the arm, you got this really nice stainless steel uh, U uh, bolt clip system. And it's extremely nice and really high quality. And it's definitely stainless steel because this thing has been up in the air for a long, long time. And there is absolutely no corrosion on it. If we look a little bit more closely too, you can see some shine in the metal. So this really is a nice uh, fixture. So yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, moving on up here, you can see the photo cell. I'll go ahead and unplug this real quick. Uh, my photo cell socket on my fixture has a little problem, and I'll show you here in a second. But um, yeah, so here is the photo cell I am using on this thing. This is a 240 volt uh, torque photo cell. Um, this fixture is uh, 240 volts, it's not a 120. So um, I went ahead and wired it so I could actually utilize um, this uh, 240 photo cell because it's actually the neutral on this uh, fixture didn't connect uh, directly to one of the hots. So yeah, I went ahead and uh, chose this photo cell for it. It's uh, brand new. It's uh, not really been used much, but I really like it, and I kind of think the dark uh, red uh, color really does contrast with the rest of this fixture. But here is the photo cell socket. Um, this photo cell socket is a little bit different than uh, the other Penco Style 69 um, I had given away. Um, for some reason, uh, I don't know how this installs, but this actual like base uh, was not connected to this ring. You can see there's this kind of like ring that just sits on the little mold that comes up. And I uh, had to fix it because it wasn't really connected to anything and there wasn't any parts. So I actually don't know uh, how this photo cell originally was built to be on this fixture. But I went ahead and wrapped a bunch of tape around it and then I uh, made it to where I could push it up and it could kind of click in and I glued it into this ring. And uh, to be able to uh, position it though, all you got to do is undo this little uh, crimp, or sorry, this little bolt here that pretty much uh, presses in once you have it in the position you want. Once you undo that, you can actually spin this really, really easily. And then once you get it uh, where you want, you can uh, just tie that screw back and it'll hold it for you. So, uh, really nice. Um, even though it doesn't have all the parts to it, I will say, uh, this piece right here, this ring, is extremely thick, just like this uh, back casting. So, it's extremely high quality, and then this photo cell is molded really nice. It's a backlight plastic, and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, it's just too bad it's not 100% um, complete. But yeah, anyway, let me go ahead, uh, to get inside, you have to take off four screws, so you have to um, open up the top section of this fixture to get to it. So let me get a screwdriver and undo these real quick, and we can take a look at the inside components. Alright, I got the screws off, so let me go ahead and just kind of pull up on it. It's uh, pretty easy, uh, once those are off, to uh, take the actual piece off. So yeah, uh-oh. So the wire uh, wire came undone. That's um, totally fine. Um, I uh, just didn't have the screw, I guess, tightened down enough on that. But no worries. Um, that will be fixed before we uh, warm this up, of course. But yeah, coming coming inside to the fixture, you can kind of see a little hole here where your wires would come in, and then uh, your wires go up into this terminal block. And again, um, everything I'm gonna say everything in here is extremely extremely high quality. Pemco, uh, I mentioned in my Model 70 that uh, Pemco fixtures, uh, some of Pemco's uh, higher wattage stuff is just really nice, like just high quality stuff. And this fixture is no different than any of uh, Pemco's other stuff. This terminal block here, you can see it's extremely thick. It's all backlight. You can see where you can put your wires in and all you do is really just screw it down and it presses your wires in. The wire, uh, the terminal block is kind of bolted to a little stand that also presses down on your capacitor. I wish I could get a little bit of a better view of this capacitor, but you can see that this capacitor in here is huge. It's just a giant box sized capacitor. I've never ever seen uh, this type of capacitor before in a street light. The ones I'm uh, and I'm sure the ones that you guys are actually all for, um, all you guys are familiar with are the regular oil style capacitors that are oval shaped and they're usually fairly small and when it comes to uh, older fixtures uh, usually there's one or two um, in 400 watt fixtures and sometimes three if you're talking about my model 70 but this one just has one huge capacitor now it is a 240 volt uh, uh, HRA ballast, but um, some high reactance ballast uh, back then uh, still used capacitors just because I guess they weren't able to get the right amount of coils yet to get the voltage out. So the capacitor helps with that voltage drop. But oh my gosh, this capacitor is extremely uh, huge. It looks like it's in really good uh, shape and definitely high quality. Um, the capacitor, and for its age and for the amount of time that this thing has been running, um, still works uh, exceptionally well. 
Um, it's kind of uh, sad because a lot of fixtures nowadays, um, especially like fixtures like Cooper or American Electric, um, they have the worst capacitors, and, and you guys uh, probably know what capacitors I'm talking about now at this point, but uh, yeah, just capa the capacitors just suck, and they fail and leak and explode. But oh my gosh, this capacitor in here is just still uh, chugging away and doing a good job at uh, putting out a good amount of brightness in this fixture. So I'm really happy to see um, this thing working still. It's good because um, I don't think I can find um, this kind of capacitor, uh, a replacement for this one, as easily as uh, some of the other older fixtures that I have gotten in my collection that needed new capacitors. So yeah, impressive work. Uh, uh, definitely give a big uh, I give a big thumbs up and high kudos to uh, Pemco for uh, doing a good job of putting uh, high quality components uh, in their fixtures first and uh, Speaking of high quality components. Uh, if we move up here, you can see some of the wires doing their thing Here's the photo cell wires and they actually have these really nice rope coat uh, rope coated sheaths protecting the wires so again they really care about protection and good quality and if we move up here you can see the transformer and oh my gosh this thing is extremely nice as well you can see just how big it is and how clean and how thick it is and if you look right here you can see it is a Jefferson Electric Company ballast Jefferson Electric uh, made ballast for uh, Pemco uh, Jocelyn and they actually continue to when Jocelyn went to Spalding they actually uh, made ballast for Spalding's fixtures um, other than that I, I can't think of off the top of my head uh, any other uh, fixtures that uh, Jefferson put had their ballast assigned to but this Jefferson ballast is extremely high quality and you can see this nice uh, really awesome uh, plate that they put on here to uh, show you the specs of the transformer it's um, extremely clean. It's uh, really nice, um, and you can see they got the uh, numbers and uh, the numbers and stuff etched uh, right into it. So uh, really, really, really cool. Um, yeah, just awesome, awesome quality in here. Um, other than all this, that's really it. Um, you just got a transformer and a capacitor. So yeah, but this is all wonderful stuff. Uh, the rest of the wires go up into the front here, where the uh, front uh, part of the street light, uh, the reflector slash uh, front housing area, um, basically just screws right in. So yeah, let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on, and we'll go ahead and roll this on its back, and we'll look at the reflector assembly area. All right, and real quick, uh, before we go into the front, now I got the fixture on its uh, back. You can see another uh, Pemco logo there and some really nice uh, lettering. Again, uh, really uh, high quality uh, metal finishings there. But here we go. Um, to open up into the reflector assembly area, all you gotta do is pull this latch forward, lift this up, and just be careful. Sometimes the other fixtures are sticky, and then it, you got this uh, hinge right down here. Just gotta let it uh, go down a little bit, kind of unhook itself. There we go and it's off and I'll put this aside and we can take a look at that all right there we go you can see it says holophane has some numberings there and it uh, doesn't have a patent date yet but um, this is definitely uh, was made sometime in the 50s late 50s um, usually in the front it would say street side but this one doesn't say it since it's all chipped up here is the uh, style number um, uh, of course, like I said, uh, Powerlight went on to use uh, this style of glass and their fixtures, and theirs are logoed as a Powerlight. And then, of course, you can see it says House End. So, yeah, really, really cool. And, of course, we can't forget the lovely Pemco logo that they put on the front of these things. Um, some of the glass uh, refractors are slightly different. On um, the other Style 69 that I uh, gave away it actually had uh, no logoing at all on the glass. Um, this one says Pemco, and that's really it. But there are some variants that will actually have the model number labeled right in here with Pemco, so it's kind of uh, nicer and more eye candy-ish. And then you can see it says Street Side. One thing you can see right off the bat is this glass mold is really clean and crisp and mold. Um, there really isn't any imperfections at all. And um, one thing I said about the Model 70, and I will say it again about this glass, is uh, Pemco uh, 
For some reason, Holofade Fane made uh, Pemco's uh, glass refractors extremely clean and just really nicely uh, defined. Like, there's uh, a lot of the details aren't very rounded. They're very sharp and very crisp, and I really like that, especially on the back here where Holofade likes to put that really nice. Uh, you know, back end style design. These are just really, if you rub it hard enough, you actually could burn your skin, get like a rug burn type feeling. It's just the details are so clean on this. So again, uh, Pemco really did care about a uh, high quality when it came to their street lights. So uh, other than that, I mean, the glass is pretty basic um, in design really, but it's very, very, very nice. All right, now I'll take a look at the reflector uh, area of the fixture. You can see I have a really nice uh, clear lamp in here. I'll go ahead and show you guys this. This did not come with this fixture. Um, this bulb uh, actually came out of an abandoned fixture uh, up here in Detroit that I was able to save a while back, uh, kind of like a few years ago now. I just I held on to this bulb to see if I could find a good fixture to put it in. This bulb is still um, really good. Um, it's just a Westinghouse lamp, if of course this will focus, which it never seems to want to do. There we go. I guess, yeah, you can see it says Westinghouse, and you can faintly see it actually says it's from 1961. So this is a early 60s, a clear mercury lamp, and it doesn't actually have a lot of hours on it. You can see um, there's not really a lot of blackening on it um, just yet. So yeah, I'm really happy to have uh, something just as old as this fixture in here. Um, the, there is a separate reflector in here. Um, to get that out, all you got to do is pull this forward a little bit. And there's some little key, uh, key slots right here. It just kind of slots under. And it comes right out. This isn't really uh, too special. Um, this is just a pressed aluminum reflector. But uh, one thing on it that kind of makes it a little eye candy-ish is um, the faint stickering you can see on here. You can actually see, um, actually it's upside down. You actually see it says Pemco on this as well. Um, unfortunately, it's in too bad a shape to, uh, you know, uh, really see what the rest of it says. But um, you can kind of probably make out something if you uh, pause the video. But yeah, um, too bad, but it's uh, kind of cool to see it's at least still there. But yeah, and that's actually really it. Uh, the rest of this is just a huge uh, hollow void. Um, but the socket here is really, really nice too, and I'll go ahead and put the camera on that. So here is the socket. It's really thick. Uh, it's a, just a giant piece of uh, ceramic. Um, you got uh, a lot of little parts. Some um, usually for the remote ballasted versions, you got two terminal blocks here, and your wires would just come in on that. But the two feeds that go to the socket, I'm um, just connect, of course, to these, and then you know, the wire electricity travels up into this. So yeah, really cool. And you got nice big screws holding it down, and the, for uh, to keep this front housing uh, connected to this back end, you got these giant bolts. There's four of them right here, uh, holding it on. So really awesome. And they're stainless steel as well. There really is not a lot of corrosion on this fixture at all, so really, really impressed with that. Um, I don't know if the socket uh, says Pemco anywhere on it. Um, I think it says it right here, but it's kind of washed out just because it's ceramic. But this is high quality, and I really, uh, again, um, appreciate that Pemco uh, took the time to uh, put that in. So, yeah. And last but not least, before we uh, warm this fixture up, um, you can see a little tab that holds the reflector on the front. It's also just a piece of stainless steel, and it's bolted here. And this bolt system kind of goes through and onto the front here where the uh, latch is to release the, uh, the uh, refractor uh, assembly. So, yeah, this is a cast aluminum as well. It has a giant, uh, you can kind of see it in there, a giant tension spring, which you can actually undo if you have to clean it. All you got to undo is that cotter pin, and it be super, um, super easy to uh, reinstall. So yeah, I really like uh, this nice mechanical latch. Um, very high quality again. Looks like I still got some bugs in there. And yeah, just everything about this fixture is wonderful. Now that we've seen all the wonderfulness of this fixture, I'm gonna go ahead and put all this back together and we will watch this fixture warm up. All right, so it's taking me some time um, as the 240 uh, volt hookups in my apartment require a lot of running of cords. But um, yeah, it's all hooked up. So let me go ahead and uh, 
shut the blinds here. The photo cell is turned off um, from the sunlight, so hopefully as I close the blinds, it'll kick on for us. So this is my 1950s Pemco Style 69 in one, two, and three. So I just realized actually with how light sensitive this photo cell is, I might need some tape. So uh, let me uh, also get some tape here to assist. With that. Uh, all right. Oh, that clear bulb is so nice. Um, it's pretty green on camera because um, it's a clear lamp. But yeah, um, now that this thing has started up, uh, let's go ahead and watch it warm up. Alrighty, so we are at full brightness. Um, this fixture is uh, very bright um, for uh, the bulb it has and the, uh, and the capacitor being as good as it is. It's a very wonderful fixture. Uh, let me go ahead, I'll kind of lean it on the side uh, just a little bit. Since I have it hooked up to multiple wires, I really can't uh, move it around too much. But if we bring the camera, you can see the really nice uh, mercury vapor uh, look that it puts on to the rest of the fixture. And if we go up to the glass here, you can see the wonderful patterns under the mercury light. You can kind of see the arc tube a little bit, but it's kind of hidden under all the extra detail. I really, really love uh, this fixture and it's super green on camera. Uh, I realize that the clear light makes it a lot greener than it should, but yeah. You can see the lovely logo under there that awesome sine wave that's popping up on the camera and yeah it's just lovely really really lovely fixture so yeah all right so that was my Pemco style 69 I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, me reviewing this fixture it is definitely a wonderful rare fixture again I encourage people if they know where any of these are to please share the information and post as many pictures of these as you can as these fixtures are very special and very rare if you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe if you want to see more in the future and stay tuned um, as I have some more streetlights um, signals that will I will be reviewing here uh, in the future and feel free to leave a comment down below if anyone of course knows anything about these fixtures that I haven't talked about or uh, knows where any are or, or anything else uh, related to this so yeah anyway I uh, thank you guys for watching and have a good day goodbye